that on. There it is. Good morning. You know, I've had a um, kind of a memory going around in my mind all morning, and I think that I just need to share it in case somebody else needs to hear from this. But about, um, I think about six or seven years ago, I had woke up one day and had severe abdominal pain um, to the point that I was in the emergency room just a couple hours later, and they didn't know what was going on. And I was just on the floor. I was crawling all over the place trying to escape the pain. Um, They finally had got me in a bed, and um, I was just kind of in and out in this place of just severe pain, and then I would kind of crumple for a minute. And then in one of those times, I had come to, and John had left the room where I was, and I was completely panicked because I was just so afraid Um, and then so much in pain, and I was like crawling up and down the bed, and they couldn't keep me still, and I was trying to peek around this corner and just holler for John, and they said, you know, he had to step out. They were taking some blood and things, and he just needed to excuse himself, (laughs) and I, I kid you not, I felt this tangible tap on my shoulder, and Jesus saying, Bonnie, I'm right here. I'm right here. And I could lay back in that bed and let them do what they needed to do. But the Lord always shows up. He knows how we need to hear him, how we need to feel him. And I just wanted to share that because it just won't leave my mind in case anybody needs that today, whatever place you're in of desperation, whether it's a place of pain, of fear, wherever you're at, and you need to know that Jesus is there, Jesus is there. I assure you, he has not left you, um, that he is right there. And I just want to thank you, Jesus, that you show up in every moment of our need. And Lord, you never leave us. Like, not only do you just show up even more, but you've never left. And I just want to pray peace over anyone who needs that word today, Lord. Let them feel your tangible presence. Jesus, that they would fill your peace well up within them. You're the Prince of Peace. And give you great praise. Amen. Well, I know we are in January, right? Has January gone and left already? And I didn't know. <laughs> um, but I want to talk to you about this great phenomenon that happens every November. I know we just came through Christmas and New Year's, but I want to talk to you about Thanksgiving, about the incredible phenomenon that happens every year. When we take the month of November, usually it takes a few months of planning this incredible day of feasting on incredible food, right? You fix foods on Thanksgiving Day that you don't fix any other time of the year, and you look forward to coming to that day, whether it's gathering with family and friends or it's a small group, but we look forward to engorging and completely stuffing ourselves full of this incredible food, right? Am I not? Okay, I'm not the only one, right? But not only that, we we plan for this filling of this food and the misery that follows. And I don't know about you, but I even will plan to wear a larger size jeans on that day because I know, you know what, I know what's coming and I know I'm just going to need extra room in that day. Or you plan to wear sweats and that's okay. I am no no judge here because I plan on wearing the bigger pants on Thanksgiving. And then we're sprawled out right on the couch ready to watch a movie or play some games, or maybe you're just all over the floor, um, or you plan a, a nice long nap. But we plan for this huge meal and the misery that follows, and then we even have to like undo that top button sometimes, right? Or we have to let out our belts, a little, a little slot right, right there. And that's what I want to talk to you about, is this let your belt out. Let your belt out in tension. Um, if you, you will allow yourself to be expanded in those places of discomfort, the Lord will enlarge you in a place you didn't realize you needed it. Let your belt out. I'm going to set that up so I can see it better. We are being expanded in tension, enlarged. If we will look to the Father in seasons of discomfort, in trial, in disappointment, I promise you, you will be expanded and enlarged. I think we can all agree that this season 
this season, this two-year season, has been peppered with disappointment and trial and grief and loss. But if we lean into the Father, this season can be marked by his goodness, and it can be marked by his glory. And I don't want to um, kind of diminish or take those emotions and make them seem like they're not validated because they are truly validated. Those emotions that, of pain, of sorrow, the loss and the grief, it's so important to learn how to navigate them, to be fully present in those emotions and allowing Jesus to sit with you in those places. We have to learn how to navigate them that our hearts can stay free. We don't want to just shove them down and say, oh, you know, it's just an emotion. It needs to just go away. Just keep tampering it down. It's important to learn how to navigate them. We don't devalue emotions, but acknowledge them and allow Jesus to sit with you in them. I love Hebrews 4, 14 through 16 says, Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted in every way as we are yet without sin. Therefore, let us approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace in our time of need. Jesus wants to sit with you in every one of those emotions. And he can sympathize with you in every one of them because he's been there before you and he comes after you in them. <clears throat> it's what we do um, as we navigate those seasons that will determine the outcome of that season. And one thing I was, um, as we were having some pre-service prayer, um, if we do not allow ourselves to navigate those feelings, they can become our response in that season. It can become our action. And I was thinking that those emotions can sometimes be what we idolize in, the, in that season instead of the Father who wants to help us through them. Now, I don't want to look back on this season. I keep saying season. <laughs> I need to find another new word. Um, I don't want to look back on these two years and just have it be known as the COVID years, right? I want to navigate things well and let this season be marked with his goodness and his glory. I appreciated Brian Kuhn's word a couple of weeks ago where the Lord had highlighted to him like how much he'd been talking about COVID rather than talking about the things of the Lord. And that challenge to each one of us, like how much have we been talking about COVID or the mandates rather than talk about how much God is doing. Because what we focus on will become how we remember this season. And God is always up to something good. He's always doing something good. Amen? I believe that as we go through um, any kind of situation in our life, it doesn't matter, it's it just a, a trial, whether it's a conflict in a relationship, whatever it is, there's a kind of a crossroad kind of moment. There's a decision point on how we're going to go through this, how we're going to navigate this. And it's that decision that will mark that decision, that situation in that moment and that season. So if we're navigating emotions well, we're keeping our hearts free, we can focus on the things that the Lord wants to do. We can make a decision based on what he's saying. The Lord's been really talking to me out of Romans 8 for the last um, couple of years um, regarding these things. We have a lovely new daughter who married our son um, last May, and she shared this with me as we began, just our lives began to shift and take, some, take on some change, which Bonnie does not like, back in 2019. And truly, this has been a word that you just kind of want to put up... Um, I saw a, a, like a road construction sign, like Holy Spirit at work. <laughs> he has been working this word in my life for two years. 
So I'm going to read through chapter 8 of Romans. You can turn there or you can follow along here on the screen. It says, Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus, because the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. What the law could not do since it was weakened by the flesh, God did. He condemned sin in the flesh by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh as a sin offering. In order that the law's requirement would be fulfilled in us, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit have their minds set. The mindset of the, oh, I'm down a row, sorry. Those who live according to the Spirit have their minds set on the things of the Spirit. Now the mindset of the flesh is death, but the mindset of the Spirit is life and peace. The mindset of the flesh is hostile to God because it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it is unable to do so. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God lives in you. If anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. Now, if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, then he who raised Christ from the dead will also bring your mortal bodies to life through his spirit who lives in you. So then, brothers and sisters, we are not obligated to the flesh to live according to the flesh. Because if you live according to the flesh, you're going to die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all those led by God's spirit are God's sons. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear. Instead, you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The spirit himself testifies together with our spirit that we are God's children. And if children, also heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is going to be revealed to us. For the creation eagerly waits with anticipation for God's sons to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly because of him who subjected it, in the hope that the creation itself will also be set free from the bondage to decay into the glorious freedom of God's children." For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together with labor pains until now. Not only that, but we ourselves, who have the Spirit as the first fruits, we also groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. Now in this hope we, have, we were saved, but hope that is seen is not hope, because who hopes for what he sees? Now if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with patience. In the same way, the Spirit also helps us in our weakness because we do not know what to pray for as we should, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with unspoken groanings. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. There's a few thoughts that I feel like the Holy Spirit has been pointing out to me in this passage. And the first one is that when we are enlarged, we are enlarged when we choose the way of the Spirit. We are enlarged when we choose the way of the Spirit. In verse 5, it says, For those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit have their minds set on the things of the Spirit. And verse 6 says, now the mind of the flesh is death, but the mindset of the spirit is life and peace. Life and peace are the things of the spirit. And who doesn't want life and peace? (laughs) 
so much of it happens in our minds, right? And when we're faced with a situation, there's a moment of choosing, what am I going to do in this? Because if I continue in my thoughts, my thoughts can take me like running a marathon down a road I never want to go. It's, I just sit there and, and stir up the negative thing that's happening in my mind. But that is what we just read. It leads to death. It's the, the mind, right, is the flesh. And we, ha- we need to have the mindset of the spirit. The mindset of the spirit. I don't know about you, but um, my parents were always trying to put the positive spin as you're growing up. Maybe you do it as parents too. You're like, take the high road, take the high road. How many of you heard that growing up? Your mom or dad saying, take the high road. And I wish I, it didn't take me 50 years to understand that, but there truly is a higher road. And it's the way of the spirit. The way of the spirit, because Jesus Thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways, right? There's a higher element to the mindset of Christ. But we have access to that. When we put to death the deeds of the body, the mind of the flesh, and we have access to the mind of the spirit. If you're a children of God, a child of God, his spirit lives in you. And you have access to the mindset of the spirit. It's choosing what am I going to do in this? I, a few weeks ago, had um, a day where I was just, I just had some things going on. Mm. All in my mind, of course. <laughs> and I knew, like, I was just feeling so much angst, and so much agitation. Like, I could just feel it building. And I thought, if I do not sit down with Jesus and take care of this, it's going to lead to irritation, and by the time John gets home, it's going to be all about him, and he's going to be to blame. So I thought, I've got to sit down and deal with this. I sit down in my chair, and how many times have you been in uh, prayer, and as you come into alignment with the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit speaks through your own words, (laughs) and you're like, how sneaky is that? (laughs) And you open yourself up to the way of the Spirit, (laughs) I was sitting in this chair and asking, Lord, where is this angst and agitation coming from? Show me. And the next words out of my mouth, the Holy Spirit, (laughs) right through my mouth, I'm calling you to somewhere higher in this. And so just that shift in perspective, just that shift in my mindset helped me to go, oh, I don't really need this agitation. (laughs) You're calling me somewhere higher in this, a higher perspective, a heavenly perspective, the mindset of Jesus in that moment. And then peace washes over, and he's just so good. Like every time, every time when we choose the way of the Spirit, and I get so frustrated with myself when I go back to those old places, the places of doubt and fear, the places of frustration, And I was literally asking the Lord, can you please just disconnect the part in my brain that does that? I'm just so tired of going back to the old person. Can you disconnect it? And I I was reading through um, part of the practice of preparing a message. I read through the chapter or the portion over and over so I know how it's going to flow. And again, the Holy Spirit is so sneaky. I, I just stalled on verse 12. It says, so then, brothers and sisters, we are not obligated to the flesh to live according to the flesh. I'm not obligated to the flesh, so why do I find myself just continue, go back to that? I'm obligated to the things of the Spirit. I forget in a moment that I'm a Spirit-filled woman of God, and I go back to the old Bonnie before Jesus. That's not who I am. I'm called to a higher place. Called to a higher place. I'm not bound to those old places. When I have that shift and I go back, decide, I'm going to have the mindset of the Spirit, it overrides my thinking and my will. I choose the way of the Spirit. I love this particular portion of a commentary I was reading about this chapter. And then over verse 12, it says, obligated, we are not obligated to the flesh, 
we have a choice what we're going to be bound to. We have a choice of what we're going to be bound to. It is through the help of the Spirit that we put to death the deeds of the body or that they become subservient and the Spirit becomes dominant. <clears throat> it's not even a work of our own flesh. It's the work of the Holy Spirit. It's the glory of God that reveals the glory of God. <clears throat> it's not even anything I can do. It just takes a moment of sitting in that chair. Okay, Jesus, it's time to deal with this. Oh, Holy Spirit sneaks in. I'm just going to shift your thinking, Bonnie, calling you to a higher place, calling you to higher thinking. <clears throat> and maybe I'm not the only one that needs reminded, but I feel like when the Lord, he stops me on a passage so that then I have another little saying that I get to tell myself or I get to see on that little road construction sign, <laughs> you're not obligated to the flesh, obligated to the things of the Spirit. It takes some reminding. Am I going to let my thoughts take me to a place that I don't want to go? Or do I allow the Holy Spirit to lead me to the higher places that the Lord has? And we cry out, Abba, Father, and here he comes. We choose the way of Jesus and the ways of the Spirit, and we have life and peace in a season where it has just felt like disappointment and grief and loss. <clears throat> there was a time, again, back in 2019 at the start of this, it just looked like a gloomy season ahead. And um, <clears throat> I felt like the Lord invited me into a place of savoring the season. And he told me on that side, <laughs> that side of the season, I was look, looking ahead and it just seemed like bleak. And it felt discouraging. And he said, I want you to savor this season. And I knew what he was saying is that he was going to show me treasures in that season that I would never discover at any other time in my life. Is it Bill Johnson that says, don't let a good trial go to waste? Allow the Lord to be glorified in it. And so I began to just spend all kinds of extra time with Jesus. I have this favorite little antique white chair that I cuddle up in, and I had a lot of time at home alone over the last few years. And I would just sit there and just be with Jesus, sometimes not saying anything at all. I felt like he invited me into a place of intimacy. He kept saying, behind the veil, behind the veil with me. And uh, he gave me a picture one time because I would still have those days of just doubt and fear. And I, I felt like I was still praying. But if I'm praying and I'm pacing back and forth, it, he was showing me I was praying out of worry and not out of place of rest in him. And so this picture, I'm just pacing back and forth frantically, fervently praying and then I see this white sheer curtain, and it was being pulled back, and this great big bobblehead Jesus poked out, and he said, what are you doing out there acting like a crazy woman? I've called you back here with me. And so it was like pulling me back behind the curtain every time I ran down that place again, right? The mindset of the flesh instead of the mindset of the spirit, where there's life and peace. He showed me so many things in that season that I would, never, I would never have today without it. Meeting with him and his presence brings the things of his character into me. The glory of God falls and the glory of God is seen and known. We will be enlarged when we choose the way of the Spirit and when we grow in the things of Jesus. And it leads to the other thing I wanted to pull out is that God's glory is revealed through our enlarging. It's not that I may boast, but it's God's glory is revealed in our enlarging. In verse 18 and 19, it says, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that's going to be revealed to us. For the creation eagerly waits with the anticipation for God's sons to be revealed. All of the things, all of the disappointment, all the loss that we go through is not even worth comparing the things that God wants to show to you. Our son, um, Nate, has been back and forth in a, a discipleship school. He lives back in North Carolina. And one of the things he began to tell me, because we were just... 
that question of why, we always want to ask the why, and there just is not an answer that's going to satisfy that question. But the question, the greater question, is who do you want to be for me in this? God, who do you want to be for me in this? What do you want to show me in this? Because that's what he's doing. That's what he's doing. And I know that um, this portion of Scripture is, is referring to the second coming of Jesus. When you read further down, you see that it's talking about when God brings his son once and for all to be revealed to all of creation once and for all time. However, this portion of scripture, because it's a living, breathing word of God, it's also a now word, and that God's glory is revealed in his sons and daughters now. When we choose the way of the Spirit and we choose to operate in the fruit of the Spirit and grow in the things of Jesus, God is being revealed in his sons and daughters. We reflect the, the character of his son. It says that we're growing in the image of Jesus. And that's how God's glory is revealed in us. The world gets to see his goodness and his kindness and experience his peace through us. He chose us to inhabit. We're the only creatures in all of, it, all of this earth that ever gets to have his spirit within. That is miraculous. It is breathtaking. He lives in us that we would reflect his son to the world that desperately needs him. The revealing of God in us as we tread through the waters of life filled with his spirit, and reflect the image of his son. And the world gets to see either God in us or our stinky flesh. And trust me, he makes me look a whole lot better. (laughs) It's true that your kids are watching, your neighbors are watching, your family town is watching, the people at the grocery store is watching, and what do they see? Do they get to see Jesus in you? While you're driving, (laughs) let me just throw that in, I've been convicted recently. (laughs) There have been a whole lot of Christians who haven't made Jesus look very good, and I'm sorry to say that, and it is very true. A whole lot of Christians have not made Jesus look very loving and kind. And we get the opportunity to do that. We get the opportunity every day to decide what we're going to show the world about Jesus. Will we show them a beautiful Savior who loves them? The Prince of Peace who wants to calm them? And the Bread of Life who wants to nourish them? We get to partner with God and do that. When we choose the way of the Spirit, we're walking in the things of Jesus. God is glorified. I truly believe that every season can and will be marked with the glory and goodness of God if we choose the way of the Spirit. Every season, every season can be marked with the glory of God. Verses 17 and 18 in the message translation says it so incredibly, and we know we are going to get what's coming to us, an unbelievable inheritance. We go through exactly what Christ goes through. If we go through the hard times with him, then we are certainly going to go through the good times with him. That's why I don't think there's any comparison between the present hard times and the coming good times. God wants to do amazing things. In verse 24, it says this, we are enlarged in the waiting We are enlarged in the tension. We are enlarged in the discomfort. We are enlarged. 
We, of course, don't see what is enlarging us. But the longer we wait, the larger we become, and the more joyful our expectancy. Meanwhile, the moment we get tired in the waiting, God's Spirit is right alongside, helping us along. It's just astounding to me that it's not even myself. It's the Spirit of God. It's the glory of God who comes in and does the expanding to glorify him. It's not even in my own strength, but the Spirit comes alongside. In this season, I have been expanded. And it was a pleasant surprise when you feel in some seasons you're not making it out. To come out enlarged. And one of the ways that I feel I've been enlarged is the area of grace. Grace outside of myself. When I haven't been able to understand this person's response and how could the Holy Spirit really have told them that and how can they be thinking this or that or the other thing, those places where I was wrinkling wrinkling up my nose at, the Father was inviting me to extend grace beyond myself in places that I wasn't capable of expanding and expanding in grace, he did it for me. Because Jesus is grace, and es- like his very essence, right, is grace and love. And because I have access to the person of Jesus through his spirit, allow him to expand me in grace when I haven't been able to give it very well. Understanding unity in this season Understanding unity in a different, a different light. Navigating through a season with leadership and making decisions that we need, needed to make. It doesn't mean we're always going to agree. Sharing life with people doesn't mean we're always going to agree. It means that in unity, Jesus is our commonality. He's our common thread. I'm sharing life with you. We're partnering in this burden together, and I will be in unity with this. It doesn't mean total agreement. It means to be in unity, to share life and shoulder the burden. In this season of much loss, I move away from dear family and friends, our daughter who is newly married, our house that I had unhealthy security in of 28 years, (laughs) even a car that I loved. There was so much loss. And yet, I have found contentment. And you guys, I am telling you, Bonnie from five years ago, definitely not 20 years ago or 30 years ago, (laughs) Bonnie even three months ago could not have stand here today and tell you that I have found contentment. I have found contentment, and that is outside of myself. That is, I think, the greatest place that God has expanded me in this season that has been so hard. And understanding that he's not going to waste anything in this place of, of pain, he will even be glorified in pain. I, I have just been amazed at his hand in this season, that he wastes nothing. And I promise you, if you have a place of loss and of pain, even that, it may not feel like it right now, and I'm so sorry. He will use it all for good. You will be expanded, and he will be glorified in every area where you lean into him. Every area. He was talking to me about the story of Gideon as well. And the story of Gideon is found in Judges 6 through 8. <clears throat> the leader of an army, been called to deliver Israel. You know, every time that they needed safe, there was somebody new. <laughs> God's always faithful. He calls up Gideon. And it said in the word that the Midianites, the Amalekites, the Ketamites, all these mites were after him. And they had crossed the Jordan. And I think in this particular story that 
uh, Gideon inquired of God, like, do you want me to go after them? Shall I go after them? And these were large armies. And Gideon had an army of 32,000 men. And the Lord says, you know, we can't do it with 32,000 men, Gideon. That's too many for me to be glorified. (laughs) And so he took Gideon's army of 32,000 and cut it back to 300 men. Talk about feeling tension, right? Like, oh my goodness, feeling the loss. But this is what I felt like God said, that he grew Gideon, he grew him to less than what he had in order to make him stronger than what he was, that God would, would be glorified. I was just thinking about in loss, when we're focused on the loss, we can't see the gain. And instead of why we have friends and family that live a few hours away now, and that is sad, but he's expanded our friends and family in, in ways we, we don't even know on the side really still. We're still in the midst of it, just kind of swimming in the awness of God. Because even in loss, he's got so much for us. And yet if we're focused on that, we can't see the gain. We can't see how he wants to mark this season with goodness. What are we going to focus on in that tension? Because we could certainly te- uh, focus on all the negative emotions that are being stirred up. We can focus on the sadness. We can focus on the agitation. But that's the mindset of the flesh, and we saw where that leads, right? But there's a mindset of the spirit that leads to life and peace. I was also thinking about in the Old Testament, the Lord would take the Israelites through a situation, and then he would tell them, um, like, I want you to build an altar of memorial stone and remember what I did here. Remember who I was to you here. I got to wonder if it's so they wouldn't think about all the horrifying things that happened in that season, but they would remember that season with celebration because of what God did. Setting up stones of remembrance in this season, celebrating the things that God did, rather than the loss, rather than the disappointments. I don't know why our human nature is just to allow all the negative things to swirl and twirl about in our minds, and we let something good come, come by, and we just don't even give much thought to it. But learn how to celebrate all those great things, that your season will be marked by the glory and goodness of God. When we allow tension to expand and enlarge us, we glorify God and our seasons get marked with his glory and goodness. So my question and challenge to you is where are you feeling some discomfort and tension? And ask the Lord how he might want to enlarge you in it. He has something for you. And I love, um, Carrie brought us to, and Pastor Nicole, the very end of Romans 8 and verse 37 is that no, no, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. This is a superhuman strength. I did a word study on this before. It's from a word that is hupernikeo. I think it's where Nike gets their word. It's right in the middle, hupernikeo more than conquerors, a supernatural strength. It's outside of ourselves through him who loved us. He loves us so much that he wants to enlarge us, that we look more like Jesus and that he's glorified. Where are those places you're wrinkling up your nose in this season? Where are these places where you're feeling a tightness? You need to let out your belt. Because the Lord wants to expand you. Let's pray. Father, we give you all glory and honor and praise. It is for your glory that we live our lives. But I want to choose your glory every day. I want to choose 
choose the way of the Spirit every day that you would be glorified in my life. And Father, I'm sure that's what your people would all say today. May you be glorified in our lives. Lord, show us those places that of un, the places where we're uncomfortable, those places of tension, that you want to call us higher, to higher thinking, that we would experience your Holy Spirit, in a greater place of revelation, greater place of power, Lord, that we would be more than conquerors in our lives and that you would be glorified in our seasons. We give it all to you, Lord. We give you the disappointment. We give you the loss. We give you the frustrations. Where we choose the way of the Spirit, Enlarge us, Lord. Enlarge us, God. That the world would see your glory and goodness in us and through us. That you would be known. In Jesus' name, amen.